evening, my name is Alex Howell. And I'm Mark Rama. And you're watching Dissecting Trek. Dissecting Trek. So... Dissecting Trek. Oh, whoa, one shot, really. End of the power board. <laughs> <laughs> Electricity and liquid goes good, mate. Yeah. Um, we open with like a little quintessential season one data moment with Georgie. Georgie? Geordie. <laughs> yeah, with Georgie. <laughs> um, Geordie's telling Data a joke because he's a, love that one. he's a glutton for punishment. And then Data analyzes why it's funny. Yeah, Not, he works it out though. Yeah, he does. And then he does a stupid. Like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> and as always, Brent Spine is amazing. As, and uh, as usual, the other person who's talking to him just sits there like this. Yeah. Even though you can't see his eyes, you still see the expression perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, Brent Spiner is great at those socially awkward, weird, off interactions where he's just so weird and so, yeah, android and non-personal. And then, yeah, Picard gets waken up by the crew and there's a, a message that can only be seen by captains. Mm. And some old guy is like, there's a conspiracy! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't talk over the secure channel. <laughs> and then he talks over the secure channel. He's like, meet me here at this time in this place. Mm. <laughs> I can't I can't tell you over the secure channel, but I can tell you exactly where I'm going to be and when I'm going to be when I'm going to be just talking like, about I, this information. I guess the idea is that, you know, they were, if they were watching, they weren't. he would have already been close to the planet and he knew Picard was as well. Yeah, it's safer than just openly talking about it on the fucking... Yeah, channel, I guess. Yeah, uh, great little cold open before the opening credits hooks your attention. You're immediately like, mm. yeah. And, it, you know, it's, it's been hinted at earlier as well, so it's... Yeah, it was set up in a previous episode. I think yeah. the Wesley one, where he goes to Starfleet Academy to try to do that test. And, yeah, I love this whole idea of, like, a uh, corruption within Starfleet and this alien entity creeping in. It's very, like, un-Star Trek. The whole Roddenberry vision was always like utopic and the Federation is perfect and everyone's perfect now and there's no drama or conflict. Yeah. And then yeah, Sunrise is like, nah, 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 nah. There's a conspiracy, <laughs> there's corruption, there's I mean, evil. To be fair though, it's not the, it's not the Federation of humans being yeah. evil, it's the little fucking earwig thingies. Yeah, little parasite things. So yeah, there was a whole bunch of like behind the scenes drama and shenanigans about this. They didn't, yeah, I think originally it was just going to be the humans within Starfleet. And then, yeah, they made a compromise. Like, well, well, if I can make them little alien things. So it's not technically Starfleet. But then, well, yeah. I still want someone fucking murdered in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this tonally is, yeah, the music was really cool. It was like, got that uh, David Cronenberg, John Carpenter, like, body horror, like, high tension strings and... Opening scene where Picard goes down to talk to the Starfleet officers is all red, and it was very much like they were trying to do like a body horror kind of tone. I feel like they they definitely succeeded. Mm. Like, I mean, by all means, it wasn't scary, but I can understand how it could have frightened people back then. Yeah, it was different for a Star Trek episode, leaning into all the yeah horror tropes. Where there's even like a little jump scare and all the like little sting moments with the strings, and in general, like you know. For a slow, boring show, somewhat tense. It was actually a really interesting episode. Like, I actually was genuinely... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it was executed, like, exceptionally well, but I like all of the ideas here. Mm. Yeah, Picard goes down onto this planet, and he immediately gets drilled by these people, asking him who he is. And oh, you got old mate on the ship first, though. The Admiral, who warned him about it to begin with, mm -hmm. was up there. And he's, he's got one of the parasites in him. 
Yeah. And there's like some horrible acting when he's fighting Jordy and War. No, oh, that seems <laughs> amazing. <laughs> It is so good. At first, I was laughing because, you know, they, they were like clumsily cutting around the um, stunt person. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is great. There was one moment where you saw his face in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, it was clumsily cutting and it looked so bad and his body type was nothing like the old man. But then, yeah, it just started showing like long shots of the guy, his face. And I'm like, wow. I, uh, wow, okay. I'll cut in the clips here. Do Klingons fear death as much as humans? I could snap your neck in a second, but it wouldn't be as much fun. Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I, he just had like a white wig on. He didn't I, have any CGI or prosthetics on his face, I don't think. He was skinny, he was young, he didn't he look like the old like, guy. <laughs> yeah. I love the way he was like, um, they all later on in the episode, they were like, we meant no harm and shit. Then you could just cut to him fucking like throwing water. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Snap yeah. your neck and oh, yeah, yeah. shit. We mean no harm. <laughs> yeah, so the whole idea is uh, these parasites are infecting people within Starfleet. There's been all these weird, mysterious deaths popping up. A bunch of weird, like, um, shifting in the hierarchy of Starfleet. A bunch of people fired and hired. And yeah, moving personnel around randomly. And yeah, so these parasites infect people, and Beverly explains their like super strength by just adrenaline. Yeah. I want to say like in real life, like if that old man had like a burst of adrenaline into his heart, like I could beat the a, fuck out of him. just have a fucking heart attack and die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, that that's not a. It, well, it's not a. It doesn't make sense in the real world just for no. adrenaline to turn an eighty-year-old man into a, a Superman. Yeah, I, I guess... think it was trying to feed off the whole idea, like, for instance, when a mother sees their child in danger, they mm. can lift a car or whatever. I mean, that is a thing. thing. Yeah. Like, if, yeah, if the average person was given a high dose of adrenaline, they're going to become, like, yeah, like, 20% more aggressive and stronger. But an old man is still not going to yeah. be... I would ragdoll that motherfucker. Yeah. Like Joe Rogan says, you know, I could be the fuck out of my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn it, John Luke, I tell you that some of Starfleet's top command people are changing. This could affect the very core of our organization. Officers I've known for years are bluffing their way through talk of old times. That's their weakness, a lack of memory. It's a great scene with uh, data on the ship's computer too. This Picard confines in Troy first and she offers nothing, of yeah. course. Oh, she... wow. I mean, oh, that's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, he confides in Data about... Actually, he tells all his bridge crew, pretty much. He's like, yeah. As soon as he decides it's so worth investigating, he wants to mm. tell everyone. Well, uh, he knows they're all safe. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and, um, yeah, he tells Data, so Data starts researching all this stuff. And he has this great little character moment where he starts talking to himself. Mm. And, yeah, he's like... He yeah, He comes to the realisation. He's like, oh, I'm talking to myself like a human. And then he starts yeah. explaining how he's talking to himself. And <laughs> the computer interrupts even him. Even the computer's like, all right, that's enough, cunt. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit much. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm. and even he was like, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really make sense, right? Like... Computers. I did get a chuckle though. It's funny, but... But it was also annoying. Yeah. I was like, he's finally getting a chance to explain himself, and then no. No, the com yeah, even the that. computer cuts him I off. don't think the computer before or after ever interrupts anybody. Quite extraordinary, in fact. Direction unclear. Please repeat request. That was not a request. I was simply... talking to myself. A human idiosyncrasy, triggered by a fascination with a particular set of facts, or sometimes brought about by senility, or used as a means of weighing information before reaching a conclusion, or as Thank a... Thank you, sir. I comprehend. Uh, so they basically come to the realization that they need to go down to Earth, to Starfleet headquarters. Why not bring data? The fucking parasites can't infect data. Yeah, so Picard just beams down by himself. Fucking retarded, right? Yeah, they have a, a conversation with these people over the view screen. They know that they're all infected because they, they were, act I'm so sorry, weird they, 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 Yeah, they made out like, oh, they seem fine to me. It's like, cunt, did you just seriously have a conversation with them? Because they seem fucked to me. The, this whole parasite thing, they're, they're all so fucking transparent. They're like the worst undercover aliens ever. <laughs> they're all like just 
blatantly inherently evil. Like Picard goes down, they're eating like worms and yeah, shit. Yeah. They're not even trying to hide it. They're not trying to hide it all. Even a guy comes up onto the ship. And he's so like sus and Holding weird. the briefcase, he's just looking at it every chance he gets. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, they have like a gill sticking out of the back of their fucking neck, which yeah. nobody How sees. No one noticed that. Like yeah, if you had to come here tonight with like something sticking out of the back of your neck, I'd be like, Mark, there's something sticking out of the back of your neck. What is up with that? Look, I'll snap your neck like a thing, but it's way more fun to throw you around. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, these aliens are not very good at infiltrating any culture. They're blatantly transparent in their, like, um, their, um, taking of human bodies. Oh, do eat up, Picard. Raise your hand if you want seconds. I mean, it was kind of a, a nice surprise that fucking... Oh, we didn't explain about Horatio being destroyed and shit. Oh, yeah, that actually was a really nice character beat. They set up um, uh, a person for Picard and Crush's past, and Picard confines in him and they're good friends, and then, yeah, later on his ship is destroyed, and, yeah, it's actually a really nice, like, emotional beat that ramps up the tension and amplifies the situation to the next level of suspense. Mm. Yeah, that was effective. But yeah, and then there was that chick who was one of the people at the meeting was mm. Parasite. It was it was kind of sad because Chrissy saw that and she's like, she was just surprised. She's like, wow, back then they you know they had a black woman and everything who was like, you know, she was excelling and shit like that. I'm like, yeah, and see, it doesn't feel like all the shit these days. Whether you know, it's like, oh, they're just doing yeah. it for the sake of it. It felt right, it felt mm. good, and, and then she turns out to be evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was uh, speaking of like yeah, SJW culture as well. There was uh, another shot of a, a guy in a dress in this episode. Yeah, I, mean, I definitely saw that. It was definitely fun. There was a lot of people in dresses in this episode. Normally you see them on occasion, but there was like heaps of chicks, and there was that guy as well. Yeah, that guy as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, The Expanse does the um, multi-race thing really well because the idea is that all the cultures have interbred and then they've spread out through the solar system. So yeah, everyone in the show is basically like, you know, half Hispanic, half black. You've got lots and lots of female characters of power. And it's just, it's not heavy-handed and like blatant and dumb. They don't even like, they don't bring it up in the show. Yeah, it's, it's just, just part of the universe. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about it. I think I watched the show like through its entirety like twice. And then somebody in some comment or something says something like, oh yeah, there is a lot of like, people of minority and women. I didn't even realize. It's because they're just people, right? They're just yeah, people yeah. in power. And it makes sense within the narrative. <laughs> exactly. It's not a fucking issue. Yeah, so Picard has well and truly established that there's a conspiracy within Starfleet. Ships are blowing up, friends are dying. He's like, I'll beam down <laughs> right into the palm of these villains by myself with no phaser. Yeah, that was silly. Like, at least bring Data down, because even if Data's not on, he's super fucking strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? He can't, he can't be corrupted. I, yeah. Although, I did think the whole ship blowing up, the ratio was fucking, like, a ridiculously bold move for them to do. Okay, oh, so there's the conspiracy neck minute. <laughs> okay, there's definitely fucking shit going on. Because he didn't even believe them at yeah. first. Yeah, the, the, these aliens are terrible at infiltrating <laughs> yeah. any and race. One job. Yeah, yeah. They're terrible at the one thing that they do. <laughs> like, fucking so bad. Well, I haven't heard Neck Minute for a while either. You think that guy's dead? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Wild Head Chef, who I talked about in the last Mandalorian review, he seems to be coming up a lot. He mm. knew that guy. Oh, really? I said that once in the kitchen. He's like, I forget his name. He's a Oh, Phil Bozeman, he was a fucking blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know him? He's like, yeah, everyone knew him. He skated. He used to skate a lot when he was younger. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, I think uh, he explained his problem was that he had a problem with his paws, so he couldn't sweat. So that's why it was all fucked. But if you guys don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> I'll cut <laughs> neck minute guy in right here. Lift my scooter outside the theory. Nick Minute. <laughs> talking around like everyone knows. Uh, yeah, I think that was a big like internet Not thing a, a, a decade, decade ago. I don't know about it in America and shit though. I don't know. Well, he was from New Zealand, so maybe yeah, it was so Kiwi Australia. Nakmana. We were talking about that last episode. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my old head chef knew that guy, which was interesting to me. Yeah, no fucking oath, man. I've been um watching Vikings from the beginning because the new 
last season come out. Yeah, very soon, yeah. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I've been getting high as fuck and I, I'm like three seasons in and I forgot how good that show it's was. It's such a good show, man. Yeah, we always complain in the later seasons that not enough action was happening and it was just like a, a blatant character drama. But it was always that from the beginning, yeah. Eh? Yeah. Like that's season... That's I mean. Like it took Ragnarok and yes, she lost one of the best characters, but mm. it was, they still were pretty flawless with their execution. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, like like season two, a lot of the first episodes are about like him cheating on Lagatha with uh, what's her face? Like Mantis. Yeah, yeah, and that whole like yeah, marriage falling apart and it's all about like the interpersonal character drama between them. But it's just so well written and the character is amazing. The acting's amazing. The dialogue is beautiful and it's just yeah, it's it's, it's a piece of art. So it'll be interesting to watch it all and see like it, when I watch it in one block if it does dip. They made me want to do it, but I'm watching the wire, so it's like. I think yeah, I think it comes out pretty soon. And there's like if if you count because the seasons became two seasons by the end. If you count them as separate seasons, like ten episode blocks, it's like nine seasons. It's mm. a bit of nine seasons. What I'll probably do is I'll watch it and then probably wait like six months or something and just watch the whole thing. Hmm. Yeah, so we can get the review out quicker and then, yeah, watch the whole thing. I don't even know at this point in time if I'm going to watch the whole thing through, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, at the moment, I'm really on board and really compelled, but if it does dip, like we suspect it did through our 27 reviews we filmed, <laughs> then I may just be like, ah, you know. Well, I don't think it will. I think you'll love the whole thing. Mm. I mean, it, it definitely dips a little bit, but, um... Well, it loses Ragnar. It does. It's it like, doesn't dip at all until it loses Ragnar. It's like it? The Sopranos losing Tony, right? Yeah, right. There are other amazing characters in The Sopranos. But would it be the same? Nah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Travis Fimmel in Aussie is amazing. That's why. Like, fucking incredible! Yeah. <laughs> like, little tiny moments. <laughs> There's this moment where, um... I forget his name. He's some weird prophet guy and he comes to Kattegat. While everyone's off raiding. Oh, the guy who just fucks all the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and he fucks Ragnar's wife. Yeah. And there's this moment where Ragnar's trying to get information out of her, and he's just talking to her. And then, yeah, he starts tapping his drink on the fucking table to get her attention. And it's just like this little tiny moment, but Travis Fimmel just does it so well. I laughed so hard, I'm like, this is amazing. It's like, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> just, the way he did it all, like. Oh. Uh. Yeah, even if it did drop, those first four seasons are incredible. Ragnar's fucking from a farmer to spoilers, not making it. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah, fucking nice. You can, if the other ones aren't as good, yeah, just forget about it. From a farmer them. to a corrupt king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Picard goes down to this planet. <laughs> I guess from a narrative standpoint, the reason he didn't take anyone down is because it's more tense. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, Picard going into the belly of the beast. Oh, fucking retarded. It doesn't make and any... And also, oh, well, I could keep an eye on him. Like... Yeah, it makes zero sense from a tactical point of view, but I guess they're trying to create more tension. They um, do like a bait and switch with Riker where you think he's infected, but he's not. But I, I, mean, I bet I really... Riker fucking loves just calling him Picard though. Eh? I bet she's like, hey, yeah. some shit, Captain. Those worms they're having a cup too, they're mealworms. Mm. I remember watching a documentary on meerkats, and that's their main source of food. Oh, true. Yeah, and they're perfectly edible for humans, so it kind of didn't work for me. It pulled me out of the immersion. I'm like, oh, they're not like alien things, they're just mealworms. You can eat them, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, that little moment didn't work for me. And yeah, they have a little shootout and we get like one of the most iconic moments in TNG, probably. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's weirdly brutal and weirdly violent. Mo the most brutal scene in all of TNG. Yeah, this, this episode really, really, really leaned into the body horror. Dude, his head fucking explodes and his chest <laughs> just like fucking, like just dissolves in front of him. There's like a rib cage and this, like the ne like the spinal bit yeah, of the neck. Yeah, Picard is just like disgusted the whole time. He's like, Ugh. oh, Jesus, something else kill that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he keeps on firing. Yeah. But he's and Wright is just like, all right. Mm. Oh, yeah, so, so they set up that these are the actual people, and I guess they couldn't have saved him because they just like blow off the Starfleet officer's head, eh? 
They couldn't have stunned him, I guess. Ah, oh, to be fair, his neck and shit was yeah. like... Yeah, props, props to those prosthetics, too. Yeah, it actually looked pretty good. For this, like, age of show and the shoestring budget they were working with here, it all looked really great. Yeah. What is it, yeah. like, 30 years old now mm. and made for, like, $27? <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. But, yeah, no, it was fucking pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, they blow up the guy. I, I remember first time watching it and being like, whoa, I did not expect that from this show. And then they do a little thing at the end where they like leave it open, like there are more of them coming. Yeah. But you never was, see them again. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. Oh, it's such a shame they didn't revisit that. Mm. But I kind of, I kind of liked the whole Picard's whole speech about how they spent so much trying to def protect life and then having to destroy it. I was like, mm. that's because a lot of the time they don't resort straight to fucking killing. Yeah, later on, Picard would not have done this. He would have bargained and reasoned as much as he could. Before he, he to blew be fair, someone's I think, fucking head off. I think even if there was no parasites, they still would have shot his head off because they mm. hated that cunt. They did. There was a previous <laughs> it was like, setup oh, thing. Fuck it. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, this is an opportunity. Right? Yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do with parasites. Why did the parasites? Oh no, I've been knocked out. I better just fucking leave. Considering there's a whole thing about how you can't remove it without killing the host. I have no idea. And it was like a stop motion animation, which was really cool. Yeah, actually, I liked that a lot. Or I mean, like a tool video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was there stop motion animation? Mm -hmm. But I did. I, I I just thought, why the fuck this thing's just done? Why don't you just go Psh, or stomp it dead instead yeah. of just letting it? I mean, it's oh, good yeah. that it, they did because it led them to old mate. Yeah, but... that's true. And then, yeah, I guess there's like a vampire thing where like you kill the head one and all the other ones die. I remember the Night King and Arya. Arya. Mm. Well, it makes you wonder, did, was he like that? That's just poor writing, right? Well, let's not it get just into wraps that, up, please. But it's the same thing in this. It's the vampire thing. You kill the head vampire and they all die. It's just, oh, well, we're done. Yeah. I mean, this is 40 minutes, though, so, you know. To tell a story in 40 minutes, you got to, like, you know, cut a few corners. Yeah, not nine seasons, right? Eight seasons. <sighs> But it, it, it does make me wonder though, like, was old mate infected when he came to the Enterprise and did the exam? I think he, was just, he wasn't, I think he was just a dick. I don't think he was. No, because he would, have been, he would have been eating maggots <laughs> and being like, oh, I'm evil. And there would have been a thing sticking yeah, out of the back of his neck. And the everyone would have been like, why don't you apparently remember your no, wife's apparently name? Apparently no one noticed. Yeah. I love why he's like, oh, also, by the way, they don't respond well to memory, and then he never uses that again. Yeah. So, I mean, that's such a flaw in these oh, fucking did, parasites did, as well, too. He did too. use it with Quinn, I think his name is. He's like, oh, is that what you were talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm sorry, but he was so ridiculously obvious. He was so positive and like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like, last time he was just a grumpy old man. Yeah, he completely changed. 100%. Like, his whole personality yeah. is just different. It's like, that was not him. So, like, are you sure? So, fucking, of course I'm sure. <laughs> Look at the cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so in conclusion, I really like the tones and theme of this episode. It was surprisingly dark. The music was really interesting. And, like, yeah, David Cronenberg, uh, like, body horror elements. I really like the ideas and the concepts, the idea of Starfleet being infiltrated by these aliens are great. It's just, yeah, the script was good. I mean, it's yeah. fine. It's just like, yeah, the aliens are so transparent that they are incapable of uh, <laughs> effectively infiltrating Starfleet. Yeah, it was like they could have easily made this like a seasonal arc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unfortunate they didn't do stuff like that back then. Because, yeah, when Deep Space Nine started doing that, it's like, oh, this is oh amazing. Oh, my God. That was so good. Deep Space Nine, bruh. Alright, see you later. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. The touchdown brings me around again to find I'm not the man they think I am. Oh, 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 no, no. I'm a rock, it's man. Rocket man. Burning out his fuse out here alone. I think it's gonna be a long, long time. And I think it's gonna be long, long.